Good morning, good morning, everybody. This is Grace here at The Comfy Nest with Grace, and I'm here on the Essential Stencil page. We're gonna be working with some tags today, but listen, we're not doing Christmas. Is that okay with you? We're not doing Christmas. We're gonna do something else, just really sweet little project. I'm gonna show you a set of um, stencils that you're. I think you're all gonna love. I think they can be used year round. Um, and we're just gonna have some fun with that. So I'm gonna make sure that this feed is working here on my iPad and I'm gonna grab my apron and then we're gonna get started. So please come on in, come on over to Essential Stencil. We're gonna play, we're gonna have some fun painting and playing. I'm actually gonna work with fab fabric. We're gonna work with tags. I got some ribbon. I've got the stencil set, um, so let's just get into it. We'll have some fun. Okay, wait, first I have to find us on here and make sure that this live is working. First order of business. We will give away three sets of stencils today, so make sure that you say hello. And for all you replay watchers, if you are not catching me live, if there's not that little live button somewhere up there, um, that red live button, it means you're catching the replay. So welcome to you as well. Um, we will also give away a set of stencils to a replay watcher within 24 hours of the broadcast. So make sure that you comment and let us know that you're replaying, watching the replay. Okay, let's see, let's see. Hang tight, um, almost there. There, I got comments. Hi, Becca, hello, Dawn. Hi, Joyce Ann. Hello, ladies. There's Trisha and Jolene. Good morning, good morning. I'm gonna grab my apron and then we're gonna get started. So just give me a second here. I gotta grab, I want an apron because I'm wearing a new shirt and I don't wanna get paint on it. <laughs> many times, many times, I don't care if I get paint on my clothes, but this is a new shirt and I really, really love it. In fact, it's one of those shirts um, I wish I had bought too. I wish they had it like in several colors because it's so super comfy. But anyway, hi Deb, hello, hello. Good morning, Nancy. Welcome everybody. Hello, who's getting ready to have some fun here? Thank you, Flip Flop Furnishings. Kimberly and Renee, tell me who I'm talking to. Hello, welcome, thanks for the compliment. Yay, Trisha says, I've been missing you. Glad I caught you online today. Oh, that's so sweet, thank you for saying that. It's so sweet. Hi, Carol. All right, ladies, so I'm gonna use, we got two things from, well, three things from Essential Stencil. Definitely using my brushes, okay? Um, I'm due for a new set. I actually bought a set, they're in my, my office. I need to bring them in here because look what I did. Um, this is like a what not to do. Um, I left mine in water too long and look what happened to the wood. Can you see how it got all like discolored it's rotting like i left this in the water for too long <laughs> these are the best brushes if you care for them well <laughs> i use a brush cleaner you'll find this in my amazon store um this is what i use for my brushes it is the best paint brush cleaner i have found even like cleans mod podge off my paint brushes like even that kind of stuff um so i clean and then condition my brushes with that um these this set of four uh, four different sizes, which is awesome. I do normally supplement. Sometimes I have a project where I need more brushes. So I have other brushes from other brands of a variety of sizes, but mainly these are the ones I use. So I'm going to use these today. I'm going to use the tags. I don't know if you knew this, but Essential Stencil does have wood tags that fit perfectly the tag stencils. And this is the set we're going to use today, but they fit perfectly. They are coordinated to go together. So I'm going to be using the tags. You can get these on the website and I'm going to be using this stencil set. It is called lemon tags. So we're going to work with lemons today. We're going to be cheerful and zesty and bright. Um, I'm going to talk you through kind of my process of getting ready for this. So you can kind of get like the design ideas. Um, and this is just me, you guys. I'm sure Many of you beautiful, creative, smart, talented women have other ways of putting um, you, like your project plan together. Um, and I say you do you like, but maybe there's something that I'm going to share that's going to give you like, oh, you know, like an idea. It's going to like spark a new idea for you. So that's what I'm hoping for. Hi, Cindy. Hi, Sue in Alberta, Canada. Ruth is here from Missouri. The tags are amazing. Dawn is right. These tags are amazing. They are pine wood. They're thick and chunky. Like, check that out, they're not, they're not thin. Like, these are thick and chunky. Um, in fact, 
think they would stand up on their own. My table is wonky, but yes, they will stand up on their own. Um, so if you made one and it's super cute, you can put it in your tiered tray or on a little shelf somewhere in your house. Um, they don't always have to hang. So we're going to be working with, I don't know. I, I, we're going to, there's three tags. The stencil set has three stencils. I'll show them to you. So it comes with fresh lemons. Cute, right? It's got great fonts. It has... Be Zesty. I love this one and I love the phrase on this one. So we're definitely using that one. And then it has, of course, the little truck with the lemons in it. Sweet Lemon Farm. All really sweet. I don't know if I'm going to get to all three because I kind of have like a layered project involved here. So we're going to do fabric and we're going to, I don't know. I, I kind of have an idea, but it's going to come together as we go. Hi, Angie in Indiana. And there's Kathy. Yes, make sure that you all say hello. Um, it shows there's 180 people. So let's get 180 comments at the very least <laughs> where you guys say hello because you need to say hello in order to win. Like in order for Essential Stencil to choose your name randomly from the comments, you would need to have a comment, girlfriend. So make sure you let us know you're here. Connie, aren't they cute? She says, ooh, I love those. Maybe someday, Connie. That's good feedback to give them. She said, I wish they had larger ones. Maybe someday. They're, they're, they're very open and they do listen to us when we give them feedback. Hello, Karen. Merry Christmas in Missouri. And Cindy's here from Snowy PA. Hi, Gan. Hi, I'm saying hello to my Gannon. He's right here, my son. You got a headache again? I'm going to go make some food. And grab some Tylenol, please. Nip it in the bud. Okay. All right, we got our, our kids are doing um, school from home virtually today. So the screen time gives my Gannon headaches quite often, unfortunately. So sitting at the screen all day long, it's a blessing. It's a blessing that we can do it. But then there's these other things that we have to work through. Um, thank you, Mary. You're so sweet. Thank you for knowing that. Hi, Angie in Oklahoma. Donna says, I love their stencils. Who doesn't, right? Who doesn't? Okay, let me get this camera down. Let's get to work. Oh, yes, and if you wouldn't mind, there's my little reminder. Sprinkle, sprinkle. It really helps to introduce um, me, you know, Grace from the Comfy Nest. It helps to introduce Essential Stencil, the project. It gets the idea and the motivation for creating and crafting and um, having, you know, this craft therapy time. It gets that motivation out to other ladies when you do this. Um, hopefully, it'll spark something in someone where they say, you know what? I haven't painted in a long time. I'm going to bust out my paints. Because that's a cute project and it is, it's inspired me. Isn't that nice to be able to do that for somebody? Okay, here's what I got. I got a bunch of fabric scraps, you guys. These are just little scraps. Um, <laughs> and so I went and I was thinking, what goes well with lemons? Well, of course, yellow, right? A really bright yellow. So that may, I'm going to turn this, see if I can, I'm trying another light, a different light this time, girls. Let's turn it down just a little bit. Um, so I've got some yellows. I've got this gray one with polka dots, which is really simple and easy. And then, of course, I just have some, um, this is like a cotton twill. I've got some, I don't know, like I think this is even a drop cloth. And you can see I've used it for other projects. So it's a scrap of fabric. So you can go out if you don't have any fabrics, go to your local fabric store or your like hobby store. Heck, some of your thrift stores have fabric scraps in them. And whenever I find neutral fabrics are great because we can paint on these, we can stencil right on these and make it part of the tag. So that, um, a lay I love layered projects and I love collage. Like I love collaging and mixed media, like bringing things together. So I just grabbed a bunch of fabrics that would make sense for this set of stencils. And then I grabbed a bunch of coordinating paints. So I've got white, I've got two different yellows, and I've got some dark gray here. I may grab my black. I'm not sure. I'm just kind of gathering supplies. I grabbed some black and white ribbon. And also, I have some burlap and black and white bows that maybe will get worked in here somewhere. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. We're just going to create as we go. And then I've got some butterflies and flower um, little embellishments that, again, maybe, I don't know, but we'll just see where it takes us. So the first thing I want to do is I know that I'm going to use this one. And I was really loving the idea of um, the, the bright yellow with this. Um, but one thing I do think of, okay, 
as I'm working through my projects. So this is just helping you think through your projects. One thing that I do think of um, is I look at my the stencils that I want to use and how bold they are. Like, are your fonts, are your graphics that are coming, um, that you're going to be painting through your stencil, are they bold or are they um, really subtle? Um, like, this is a really skinny font, but it's beautiful. Um, and then we have this big, bold lemon over here, right? So my point is, is it going to show up well on whatever background you choose? So this background, very bright. It has these tiny little circles on it. Um, so which one of these will show up best on here? I think this one. That's just my opinion. So I'm going to use this with this and we're going to stencil. I'm not going to get um, real fancy with different colors. I'm going to keep this really monochromatic in terms of what paint I'm using on here. But I love with my fabric, I could take this and just trace it out. That's not me. <laughs> I don't like things to be really linear because I, I like things kind of wonky. If I were to do that, the stencil fits exactly and perfectly on the tag that you get from Essential Stencil. They were made to go together. So if you're just going to stencil right on your tag, it's going to fit perfectly. But I don't want my fabric to be that same exact size. I want it a little smaller because I want to see the tag. I want to see the wood. That's the, the mixed media that we're using a couple of different media here. I want to see that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rip this fabric because I want it to have like frayed edges and I'm going to rip it just smaller than this tag. So I start out with my scissors. I'm going to give myself a fresh rip here because this seam, this side here, actually, let's go this way. Um, I have cut it so it's a little jagged and uneven. So the first thing I'm going to do is just, I put a little snip in here and then I'm just going to rip so that I have a straight line. I might have to go a little further out, like a quarter of an inch, right? So now I have a nice ragged little edge, which is what I want, but it's straight. It's straight, but it's ragged. That's exactly what I wanted. I'm gonna save this because this I can use on my project. It will coordinate and it'll be usable later. So I got my first line ripped off. Now I want it to be, here's my stencil, I want it to be just smaller than the wood tag. So I'm putting this down to give myself a gauge. It needs to be big enough to stencil on, but small enough so that I can see the wood showing through. So the wood is gonna be the backdrop. So really, my next rip line, my next cut line, will be about right, let's go right here. I've never done this before, you guys. I'm making it up as I go. But now I have, see how it's like really two nice straight edges, even though I ripped it, but it gives it a nice soft look instead of a cut look from your scissors. I love that frayed look. So now, yes, I can fit all of my words on there. And my hope is that it's still narrow enough that I'm going to see the wood, the natural wood, the pine peeking through, which it is. See, I still have my little border here which is the wood. Does that make sense to you? Now listen, I'm not gonna be able to rip cut this in the same shape with these diagonal lines at the top of the tag. So I'm gonna go straight across. You'll see there's gonna be a method to my mind this year. I'm gonna go straight across and I'm gonna go at this point here. I'm gonna cut it straight across here, but not cut, I'm gonna rip it. So I'm gonna go like here. I'm just gonna rip that so that I have one little square that's gonna fit perfectly on here, and then we're gonna stencil on that. And then we're gonna, like, we're gonna bring it all together. Okay, so let's stencil our fabric first, and then we'll work on our tag and putting it all together. Okay, so here I got my little piece of fabric. It's really sweet, really sweet. It's got the ragged little edges, which I love. I don't wanna get rid of those. I'm gonna grab my little craft mat so I can paint without getting paint on my, my cutting board. And I'm just gonna go with the dark gray. We're gonna stencil right on this fabric. Let me see what comments. Let's see what comments we have. Love the yellow with the pine, right? It's gonna be so pretty. It's gonna be so pretty. I did have the idea of darkening out a little bit, but let's let's put it together and we'll see. Um, I like the yellow with the pine too. Um, and I haven't quite decided how this is all gonna look in the end. I've got all of my elements together and now we're just getting creative. Now we're just 
we're playing and we're gonna have some fun with our with our paints and our fabrics and all of our stuff. All right, I'm gonna grab this. I need just the tiniest little paint. We're using tiny little um, stencils. We don't need a whole lot of paint. We just need tiny little bits. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of gray here. Can always add more. Where did my smallest, this is how I work guys, stuff everywhere, really disorganized. That's how I work. It's just how I roll. Tiny bit of paint. This is a dark gray by Apple Barrel called Pewter Gray. If anybody wants to know, thought you might ask that. And we're just gonna stencil this right on here. I'm making sure I can see through the stencil, which I love about these stencils, I can see through this to see that it um, it's gonna all fit perfectly and that it's straight and even. I don't even get real worked up about things being super straight, you know me. I like things a little bit wonky. I like them to look natural. I like them to look handmade. I'm not going for like manufactured perfect. That's just not me. So I'm using this dark gray called pewter gray with the fresh lemon. And you see I'm stippling because it's a, it's a fabric so it's gonna absorb the paint differently than a wood, it's gonna absorb even more, like fabrics absorb, right? So you need to make sure you have enough paint so that it can get in there, but not so much that it's gonna bleed through. You don't want it to bleed through and absorb into other parts of the, the fabric. So just try it, girls. You're gonna have to get a feel for, I can't tell you put this many ounces of paint or like this 10th of an ounce of paint on your brush. You have to like, just start working with your supplies and practice and have fun and just know, hey, it's a piece of scrap paper. If it gets all goofed up, or it's a piece of scrap fabric, if it gets all a little goofed up, we just grab another piece and we try again. It's not, there's nothing to get real stressed about. We're here to have fun. We're here to enjoy the creativity time. We're here to like come up with ideas that we're pleased with. So don't get yourself all worked up. Okay. I like the stippling on fabric. I just think it applies really well. Whoops. I don't want it to budge on me. How's everybody doing today? What are you guys up to? It is Thursday, right? So, oh gosh, Christmas is in a week. Um, my husband came home yesterday from a five day ice fishing trip with some friends, so that was a welcome. I was like, thank you, I'm so glad he's home because it just takes the pressure off for me as the parent, right, with dinner and all the stuff. Um, I think so too, Tracy. I have tags yet, but have to, uh, haven't to. have used them yet. Oh, Connie, get them out, get them out and use them. Rose says, I have watched a video about how to make bows. Yay, good for you. Okay, look, look what we got. So that dark gray on the yellow, see how we have nice contrast and it really pops. It just fits, it's nice contrast, it really pops. And now this is going to get applied to our tag and you can position it any way you want. But how cute would this be on a tiered tray? So let's get, have some fun getting this applied on the tag. Now listen, somebody said, I like the way the yellow looks with the pine. I do too. I actually like it. And I think we could leave it like that. I was actually thinking we could put some of the gray paint on your pine board as well to give yourself more frame to the, um, the piece of fabric. If you really wanted that piece of fabric to pop a little bit more, the frame, if I, if we look at how the board sticks out it's just little it's like a quarter of an inch on every side but it's there so if we wanted that frame to appear more dramatic um let's do it i'm gonna paint this tag gray the same gray that i used for the words i um i'm i'm making these decisions as i go i love the way that looks together the pine with this but let's you i just showed you what it looked like without the gray. Now I'm gonna come in with the, on same, I'm using the same brush on the edges. I'm gonna darken them out with some of this gray. So let's see what that looks like. Just, it's comparison. Like this is how you decide what your design style is and you come up with um, new ideas for creating your projects. I don't have to paint all of that because it's gonna get covered with fabric. 
So I just really want my edges to be blackened out a little bit. So I'm using my stencil brush and I'm brushing very imperfectly, brushing some black around the edges, or it's um, gray, excuse me, this pewter gray. And I'm taking it from inside out. Do you notice I'm not trying to come back and forth because I don't want the edges to get dirty. I'm trying to avoid getting the edges with paint. I like my edges to be natural. Okay, let's stop there. I'm not I'm not finished, but let's stop there and just look now when I put this on here how the frame of wood shows up better because now it's grayed out a little bit. So let me get this centered on here. There's very little room to work with. It's like a quarter inch all the way around, but do you see how it like now it pops even more. Now it pops even more because we have that bit of gray. So I'm gonna finish. I'm gonna come all the way up here with that gray. I don't wanna stop there. That would look a little funny and a little silly. So I'm gonna come in now with a dry brush and I'm gonna dry brush gray in a very willy nilly way <laughs> up here. So we have a gray dry brush that matches the gray words now, okay? So I, want, I don't want it to be perfect. I'm not going for full coverage. I'm just going for some contrast and color that matches, okay? I don't know. I have to see if, if that's enough. Yes, that's enough. That is enough. Okay. So now see what we have. See how different that is? It, and there's no right or wrong, girls. There's no right or wrong. You can gray it out if you want to. I used gray and yellow. You can use whatever color combinations you want, but the, the design thought is the same. If you want your, you know, your bright piece of fabric to pop a little more, you only have a quarter inch around so it gives your frame better like standing, like it shows up better. If it's gray, I think it looks lovely. I think it looks really lovely on the pine as well. That's more bright and fresh and natural looking. There's no right, there's no wrong. It's just what is your preference? Okay, I'm going with this one. <laughs> That's what I'm gonna go with now. Let's have some fun with figuring out how we're gonna embellish this and how we're gonna attach it. These are like little mini projects, you guys. Isn't it cute? Hey, thanks for the stars, Christina. Oh, it's a seven week streak. Christina, you are a rock star girl. Thanks, Tracy. Very country, Lucinda says. Cool, that's a cool way to look at it. Wowzers, Goldie says, isn't that a big difference? See what that does? Now let's have some fun though. We need to embellish this a little bit. I was thinking, what would it look like? Hold on, let me grab. Um, I gotta grab something, hold on. I have these brads that I think make really cute anchors. They kind of look like, like nails. Um, so one idea is, if you can get them open, <laughs> to open them first, <laughs> is to grab some brads and I like, they, these come in different colors. You can buy these at your hobby stores, right? Um, I bought a set that came in like gold, silver, copper, and this pewter color, which is pewter, pewter. So it kind of matches. So you could go contrasting or you could go the same. But one idea is to take these and to poke them through your edges so that it looks like you've got nails, like that it's nailed down. It's not really nailed down, but you poke them through, you open up the backs, cause that's what holds it on. It like holds it onto your fabric. You open up the back of the brad and that holds it onto the fabric. And then when I glue this down, it's going to look like I have four nails, but I don't, you know that, you know my little secret is not that they're nails, that they, they're these tiny little brads. Okay, so just take the effort. These things are pointy enough they're pointy enough here on the edge that like you can literally punch this through your fabric. Just poke it through like a needle. And then once you have it through, you open up. There's like two edges to this, two like metal edges. If you've never seen a brad before, I'm trying to describe it to you. Just make sure that you put it in deep enough on the um, fabric corner so that you can open up. See how it butterfly open? It butterflies open. You wanna make sure that you have enough room to open that up and it's not sticking out from your tag. I suppose if it was, you could always use your like wire cutters and cut that down, but um, I just make sure that I put it like a quarter of an inch in so that 
first of all, you're gonna see the whole brad because you got the brad top that you wanna see and then you have this thing on the back that you have to butterfly open so it looks like it's staying on there. Okay, this is just embellishment. This is like a pair of earrings. Like It's just like putting on earrings on your little project. It just is gonna look like fake little nails. That's like, like I had nailed this to the board. I'm not gonna nail it, I'm gonna glue it. Now, you could use nails. <laughs> That's the other option. You could just use nails, but I have these little nail brads, and to me, especially on a live, these are way more um, user-friendly. Uh-oh, I've got a little bit hanging out. I just told you not to do that, and then I have, you're not gonna be able to see it because I, I just don't think you will, but I have a little bit of this corner coming out from behind my fabric, so I'm gonna take my little, these, I got these in like the floral section at Walmart. I'm gonna see if I can just snip off that end. Um, yep, it came right off, girls. So I just shortened that little brad head, the back of it, so that it's not showing. Now I'm gonna glue this down. So it's gonna look like it's nailed, but it's not, it's glued. It's all an illusion. Thank you, Miss Dorothy. Thank you, thank you, you guys. Where did I get the brads? I think I got them at Hobby Lobby. Um, just go to the scrapbooking section of your hobby store. I think I got them at Hobby Lobby, you guys. Um, I, I, I'm not entirely, it could have been Michael's. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know, I'm sorry. Michael's, Hobby Lobby, just go to the scrapbooking section where they have all the scrapbooking supplies, okay? Um, so now, see, that just adds a little bit of embellishment. Now remember that I had this strip of fabric that... I trimmed off the edge of my um, the edge of my scrap of fabric. I'm gonna use that as my hanger because it's gonna match. Okay, so nothing goes to waste. Let's get this glued down because I think this is just gonna be so cute the way it is. You could use hot glue, but I don't like using hot glue with fabric because it will, um, it binds funny to it. I have fabric glue somewhere, but since I'm, I have fabric hot glue, but I'm not gluing fabric to fabric. I'm gluing fabric to wood. So I'm going to use my Fabri-Tac. Got this at Walmart. You can get it at all your hobby stores too. I'm going to use this. I'm going to apply it to my fabric. Just a thin coat of it. You use whatever glue you want, really. Just keep in mind that you're working with fabric on glue. E6000 would probably work. I'm gonna to try to put a really thin layer. I'm not worrying about the center. I just wanna get the edges to stay on here. Like, who are we kidding? This thing isn't gonna get used like a toy. It's gonna to be sitting somewhere decoratively. So we don't have to worry about it getting mangled and distorted. We just have to make sure that it stays on. So I'm gonna flip that over. It has all the glue on it. And now I'm gonna push down where my glue is very softly. Pushing down, I had some glue ooze here because I, just because that's what happened. So I'm just taking that oozing glue off with my fingers and then I get my little shop towel here. All right, you guys. So it lays nice and flat with that fabric tack. I have a tiny little piece of nail bread hanging out here. I gotta do my little clippity clip here. I have it hanging out and I don't like the way that looks, so I'm gonna do that. Now I need, I definitely need to reinforce. I didn't put any glue where my tabs were. So I'm going to come in. There's my edges again. Christina and Lindsay, if you're here, me and my edges, I'm going to put a little glue. That's just a glue booger. I'm going to put a little glue here and reinforce my brads so that they stay on. But I really like the look of it being a little floppy, I guess is the word, or not like glued so tight that it it looks like I don't know I like it to like be a little floppy I got another little brad hanging out there and I don't want to see it I'm just these nail brads are extremely thin so this um wire cutter is working great it's it's easy enough to cut a little bit more glue on each of these edges. I want them to really stay down. I don't want them to be floppy, floppy. I like the idea of floppy, but we don't want it to look messy. And since the nail brads are a little heavy, you wanna make sure that they stay in place. Okay, when I say floppy, I like the edges to look all like raggedy floppy. See that? 
see now it's just on there really well that fabric tack will just um hold that down really well you guys how simple and easy is that now listen i'm using that little scrap of fabric that matches the fabric underneath my stenciling and i'm just going to tie this i actually could create a little bow if i wanted to um, i tied a little knot up here completely uneven so I'm just gonna trim this down so that the sizes match better and then you could actually if you don't I love the look of this little raggedy um, knot here but if you don't like the look of it you can just pull it so that it's toward the back you guys and then you won't see it so much if you're hanging it okay I've um, got a big scrap of or um, thread of fabric there so what we got so far, I love these. I think this is such a fun little project for just even sh putting on a shelf somewhere, like in your kitchen, right? If you have like a little, if you have yellow in your kitchen or lemons in your kitchen, or you want to put together a little lemonade stand for the holiday, you're going to have a little lemonade section of the table for the kids to have their lemonade all day. Like how cute would that be? Now listen, you could do all the embellishments. Like I was thinking about black and white ribbon. Um, so... Black and white ribbon, little black and white bows um, could make it even more. Like you could do what you guys do, whatever you want. Actually, this would be really cute up top even. Or use some of your scraps of fabric to make your own little fabric bows that match. I'm going to leave the, the ribbon off. I think I'm going to use that black and white ribbon on the next one. But here's the first one. Let's do one more of these. Um, we're going to go with a different little bit of different color scheme here, but I think it can still be coordinated. So let's use Be Zesty. We're going to try to coordinate. So for this one, I'm going to choose, I have yellow fabric, gray paint on the last one. So for this one, I'm going to use gray fabric and I don't know, should I use yellow paint or maybe the dark gray paint? Let's just, let's get our fabric ready first and then we'll decide. Oh, so cute. Yay, Robbie! She says, I'm late, but I'm late coming on, but I'm glad I'm catching you. Yay! Yeah, get fabric tack. It's a great glue, like just general glue to have for lots of different things. It says on it, it was cheap too. It's not very expensive. This is the small bottle. Um, comes in a bigger bottle. It says Bonds Fabric Lace Glass Leather Wood Trims. Premium. I have to glue, grabs fast, dries clear, it's acid free, and it's washable but um you can use it on fabric but i use it a lot of times when i'm working with fabrics on wood it works really it seems to work really well for me okay i need my first I, my first cut is just fine it's really straight so this second cut what i'm doing is i'm going to place the second cut so that it's about a quarter inch because remember this is the exact same size as my wood so i'm using this as my guide for how big my fabric needs to be um, so I'm going to cut a little tiny snippet with my scissor, and then that gives me my place that I'm going to tear. Uh oh, this one might not tear this way. Nope, it's not going to do it. If you <laughs> if you tear, some fabrics are really stubborn, and if you tear the wrong way, so they're cut on a bias, and so that the strands of uh, the, the the strands of um, thread when they're woven together, they go one direction or the other, and they're they're easier one way over the other it just is easier to pull it i couldn't pull that one at all it wouldn't even give so i'm just going to go the other way just flip my fabric around i'm going to go this way it's not a big deal sometimes your fabric is going to do that for you so there's going to be one side that's going to be hard to rip the other one should be really easy to rip see that easy easy breezy okay now we need this one's going to look really oh this is the end that i started from I'm working with scraps of fabric, so they're not exactly square. I'm just trying to make them work for my projects so that I don't, you know, I don't like things to be cut really linear. I used to, I used to quilt. This one's not going to let me, it just won't let me tear this direction. So I'm going to have to cut and fray it. So let's, I'll show you how to do that. Don't get worked up. I love the torn look, but if it doesn't let you cut it and then you need to just pull, 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 pull until all of the threads come out that are there and it's going to fray it for you. Um, this is much more natural looking to me and I love the torn look. I love it. I love it. This one, see that one was cut at one time. It wasn't even cut evenly. <laughs> so I'm just going to, it's fine that it's not even. I'm just going to use my nail and I'm going to pull on some of those threads 
to pull them out. The other thing you can do, I don't know if I have one here. Before I speak, let me just look. Um, do you know those little wire brushes? I used to have one around um, that are really stiff wired brushes. You can use a stiff wired brush and do the same thing with that stiff wire brush. It looks like a toothbrush, but it's got really stiff wired um, bristles to it. And like they're sold in like the tool section and they're for cleaning electronics and things like that. But you can just use your nail, fray it up a little bit. I just like it to look a little, a little wonky, not so perfect. We're gonna put on this one, be zesty, which is a really cute phrase. And listen, I want these to stay coordinated. So I'm gonna use the same paint colors that I used on the other one. I'm gonna use on this one. So they, you could, I could try yellow on top of this, but I think I'm gonna go with dark gray. You guys vote, tell me, on this one, would you use dark gray or would you try yellow paint? So the thing with the yellow paint is you gotta remember, we are painting on a, a light gray fabric with white polka dots. Would you use the dark gray like I did here or would you use yellow to try to pull in the yellow? Connie says, yes, I use that when I make cement leaves. I think I'm going to go through mom's fabric stash. Oh, yes, Kim. If mom has a fabric stash, how glorious. There's probably some vintage fabrics in there. Ellen says, paint it gray. Marie, thanks for the stars. Candy says, try yellow. Christine says, the dark gray. What do you guys vote? What's your vote? Should I paint dark gray or should I paint yellow? I'm going to stick with one color because I could do, you could do, dark gray here and yellow there, but I'm gonna stick with all one color. Tina says dark gray, Kelly says yellow, gray, gray, gray. I love getting your input, you guys. So thank you for sharing. My Z is coming like a little bit off the edge here, but I think we're gonna get the picture. I'm just a tish short. Let's let's see what this looks like on our on our piece of wood. It's about the same size, but you know where I'm a tish short? I'll show you here in a second. This like wonky little place right here where it's a little bit shorter. Like I tore it, you guys. So it's looking a little ratty and raggedy, but that's what I wanted. So just work with what you got. Like, like don't, you don't have to get too worked up about this. The whole idea is that it's not perfect. Um, so I'm gonna just, I'm gonna put my lemon up there and I'm gonna have the Z showing up a little more down here. You have to choose. Something on here is gonna be a little bit not showing really, really perfectly, but that's okay. All right, let's do the gray. We already have the gray out for the sake of time. Well, let's do gray. Well, I said we already have gray out and I didn't realize we used it all up. <laughs> and then when we put this one together, it's gonna to have a bit of a different look. So we'll decide if we need to, um, because we're using the gray, do we need to gray out our wood or not? We'll decide that in a minute. Let's first get our, our paint through and onto our fabric. And you could move stuff around. Like just because the lemon is here on your stencil doesn't mean you have to keep it there. If you wanna move the lemon and put it somewhere else, just tape it off like you see us do with our painter's tape. Oh my gosh, this is such a cute little set, you guys. Does anybody have this set already? Who has this set already? Tell me if you have it already. If you don't, go out and grab it. Go to EssentialStencil.com and grab it. Use my code, the Comfy Nest, to get your 10% off. If you order $45 or more in product, you're going to get free shipping. And um, I would add the brushes. <laughs> You know, add your brushes to your order and the tags, because these tags are made specifically to work together, and they're gorgeous. They're just beautiful, really well-made uh, tags. All right, I think we're going to be in good shape here. You guys, this is super cute. This is just such a sweet little, and you could have the littles, now that I say super cute. i got to get the gray paint off my fingers, hang tight, because I don't want to get it all over the place. I'm dipping my fingers in my paint water to clean them off. Look at, look at how cute. I like the gray. I really like the gray, you guys. Okay, so let's decide now. Now we look, we take our little design and we put it on our board here and see now what a different look this gives. We put gray and gray on a pine board 
and see how different that frames. It, it frames it so differently because the color difference, right? So again, I want to do something here to make this stand out more. I'm going to take away that. I like the pine. I'm not saying the pine. There's anything wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with the pine wood. Let's add some yellow. Let's put some yellow paint like we did here with our gray, but now we're going to use the yellow paint. Again, I'm trying to coordinate everything and get them to be coordinated. Oh, wow. I might not have any more of this one left. Hello, are you in there? There you are. I don't need a ton. We're just going to dry brush on some yellow paint. I don't want it to be perfect. I'm going to grab a little, little paintbrush. Since I don't have any yellow on, um, if I had yellow on this brush, I would have used it. But I don't. I have gray on that brush. So I'm going to take just a new paintbrush with a little bit of yellow paint. We're going to dry brush the edges with some yellow. Doing just the opposite of what we did on the other one. But it's all coordinated. We're going to... So this is going to frame it with yellow. Got a little on the edge that I didn't want there. If you get a little on your edges, you guys, while it's wet is when you want to run your finger over that and get it off there because it's nice. It's easy, easy to clean up. Like I, I want to keep my edges natural. I don't want them yellow. I like mine natural. It's just, I don't know, it's just my preference. It's just a personal preference. Um, if you plan on painting them, it doesn't matter. But if you want them to stay natural colored, I don't, I'm not going for full coverage here. I just want to have a yellow tinge coming out. So you can actually still see the pine, the lines of the pine wood there, which I like. So let's see how that looks, if it's gonna be bold enough to actually see the yellow. Oh my gosh, I love it. You guys, look what we're getting here. Look at how cute, 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 cuteness. Now, the other idea I had for affixing like um attaching this to you could nail them um the last time i glued it and then i used the little nail brads to look like it's nailed but i was thinking what if we used a staple gun and we stapled these on here i'm gonna try it just because i'm curious to see how that would look four staples would you do staples or wouldn't you girls tell me i think four little staples because what we're doing we've got our wood we've got fabric we would have the metal, which brings another medium in. It brings in another like um, tool in, just like we did here. We used metal here, but they were brads. Um, so it's like adding, this is called mixed media, when you're adding a bunch of different supplies together to create a little piece of art. Let me see, I'm gonna check comments real quick and see what you guys are saying about that. Isn't that so cute, you guys? It's so simple and so easy. I love the yellow frame too. I love it too. I'm glad you guys like it. Yes, I love seeing the wood grain through the paint too, Kristen. <laughs> Christine says, I love your excitement. I get so excited with these little projects. Let's try it. Let's staple these on and see. Listen, if I staple it, I seriously don't even need to glue it. <laughs> I don't need to. We're going to staple it. I don't know. Let me just make sure I don't need this on here. This little... Tool. I just want to stay. I don't know, you guys. Let's see. It could look really cute or it could look really goofy. We'll see. It's all about the fun of creating. You know what? Like, don't. My point is, don't take it too seriously and don't. Why am I flipping it? I don't need to flip it. It's all going to end up the same. Don't take it too seriously. Don't, like, get too perfectionist about it. I like it because it looks a little industrial and um, it's very country. And I think because we're just using like natural metal elements, there's nothing fancy about them. I like it. It kind of reminds me of a wood crate that your lemons come in. You know, those, those wood crates that you can buy tangerines in the summer or um, sometimes your lemons or oranges come in little tiny wood crates. Do you ever buy your lemons like that from the grocery store? They are, the wood crates, the wood is so thin that they're stapled together. That's what that reminds me of actually. Now, coordinated, I wanna be coordinated. I'm gonna grab another strip of this. I got all kinds of tools everywhere. 
Let me grab another strip of this because I'm going to tie this one with the same yellow. I don't know. Let's see what that looks like. If I grab a little tiny strip of this, am I going to like the way it looks with these together and this tied with the same yellow tie as the other one? You can change your mind. Like if you want the gray fabric to tie this one, then do that. But I like the idea of using... You know, we're using the same fabrics, the same gray paints, the same elements like metal to hold these things down um, on all of them because that's the whole idea is that it's like a coordinated little set, right? So here we go. Here's number two, be zesty with the same yellow fabric tying it together. So now we have these two. You guys, I'm, I'm just, it's seriously so cute. Seriously. Now listen. Let, I wasn't going to do the truck, but let's look. Maybe we should do the truck. Maybe we should do the little sweet lemon farm truck. Now we have gray polka dots. We have the yellow fabric. So we have a design decision to make. I don't really think I want any of these tan colored. I don't have white fabric. If I did, I would go straight to white and I would do yellow on it. Let me just let me just check my fabric stash one more time, you guys. I'll be right back because I really would love to have white. Ooh, ask and you shall receive. I found some white. <laughs> Yay! I'm introducing a third color. This is just white. It has little florals on it, but I think it'd be really cute. Okay, say so we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna take my little. My fabric is too straight. This strip is too straight. It was cut with a rotary cutter, it looks like, at some point. So I'm gonna, the first strip, I'm just gonna rip because I love the ripped look. Now this can become my tie if I want to, or I can make a little bow with that. I won't throw it away because it'll get used for something. Now, this is already ripped. I need to get a little piece here. I'm gonna go like right there. I'm gonna give myself a snip. And tear down the whole edge make sure it's gonna fit it is gonna fit it's just gonna fit my little s is gonna come off the edge there a little bit but that's okay and then I'm going to cut again hoping it's gonna let me because I really prefer you notice I am not measuring all of these you guys I, I'm not measuring I'm just eyeballing it to get these little strips of fabric okay need this. Now we can introduce some yellow because I'm working on white fabric. So now I can, we can get some yellow paint going in here on this sweet little project. I'm going to lose a little bit of my S, but you're going to be able to read it because you're going to know that it says sweet. Okay. I'm going to use a different paintbrush. I want, I do want to use one of my stencil brushes. So I'm going to grab a different one because the other one has gray on it. So let's get going. Let's do some yellow. This one, um, I didn't feel like the yellow paint was going to show up really well on the gray fabric. Or, of course, on the yellow fabric. But introducing white fabric now, it's a totally new fabric, but it's going to allow me to pull in this yellow color. Whoops. See, I'm trying to do the little circles. It worked on the letters. It's not going to work on the truck. Um, there's too much open space on this stencil for me to do tiny little circles with my stencil brush. So I'm going to have to stipple this on. When I tried to do the tiny little circles, it was grabbing the fabric. Hold on, girls. Oh, good gravy. Please don't tell me I'm going to run out now. It was grabbing the fabric and making the fabric move underneath my stencil. And we don't want that. We don't want that. So we're going to stipple this on. Oh, good Lord. I hope I have enough paint. This is running low. I might have to open a, find a new yellow to introduce to this. When I run into these problems live, you guys, it's always like, okay, learn from Grace's mistakes. Make sure you have enough paint of the color that you want to work with. Oh, come on. Like, I just need a bit more. Come on, baby. There we go. I got some. I'm going to make sure it's evenly in my brush. I just need to do the front of my truck. I'm going to lose a bit of my wheel too. 
but you're gonna it's it, you're visually your eyes gonna your eye is gonna make up for that your eye is gonna say oh okay I know that's a wheel up there like it's missing but yes I can see that it's a wheel this actually you guys I'm not loving the way it's showing up this is what we talk about when we talk about picking a base color that's gonna go really well it's not showing up you guys it shows up but it look you see how hard that is to see what that is it's too difficult it's too difficult. We run into this too, you guys, as brand ambassadors. You do this more and more and you get to like picking things that make more sense together. So we're gonna do, I want to use this stencil, but I'm not gonna be able to do it with yellow because look it, it, it just isn't with this white fabric, the white fabric, the only white fabric that I have, it's not gonna work. Still gonna use the white fabric. I still wanna use the white fabric. So I'm gonna grab another, I'm not gonna use that yellow though. I'm gonna grab another strip of this. Let's see, I just need a tiny strip, like, oh, like right there maybe. Eyeballing it. Again, I'm eyeballing it. I suppose I had that other big strip over there I could have used. Oh well, we're gonna do gray. We're gonna have to go back to the gray. And that's okay, because it'll show up really well. This is how we learn. This is how we discover what we like, what we don't like. Um, it's not the end of the world when it doesn't work. You just reinvent, right? So we get another piece of fabric here. Same stencil. I'm not even going to clean it because that's the way I roll. Oh, it's just a little short, you guys. It's too short because I'll lose too much of my wheel. I'm going to go back to the original strip that I had created. And this one, I'm not losing a lot of my wheel. This is what uh, happens when you're making it up as you go. But to me, this is the fun. This is the fun of discovery and playing and just piecing it together as you go, using what you have on hand and piecing it together and making it work. There. Again, my wheel right here is gonna get a little bit lost, but your eye is gonna be able to like make that work. You're, you're gonna put, you're gonna like, in your mind's eye, you're gonna, the rest of that wheel's gonna be there. So don't even worry about it. This is the stuff I don't want you to worry about when you're creating. Just, you'll see, it'll come together. Really cute. All right, so on this one, we're going white with gray, and then we're gonna introduce the yellow. We're gonna have to introduce the yellow somewhere in here. So maybe, again, I have a, a yellow background to this one, or maybe we'll use more of the yellow um, fabric and I can create a little bow or something to go with it. I'm gonna get this stenciled on here first. So thank you for being patient. My first one didn't go well, but it's okay. I'm making sure I get all my letters done. Now I just have the front of this truck to do. I know that this paintbrush has more paint in it than it's um, when I stipple. It's not it's not releasing it anymore because there's less. But I know there's enough to just finish this tire. So I'm doing the little circles to get it off there. Okay, this is going to be way better. We're going to see it a lot better. Okay, we're going to do a comparison because I'm going to say to you, here's my yellow, my original that I didn't love the way it turned out. Here's the new one, right? So much better. So much better. So that's okay. We got white. We got our gray. Here's our third tag. Let's put this. Now we have to decide. We're gonna paint it something. Okay. Um, we got our little frame, and I do. I do like. I do like the pine wood natural. Um, it would be really cute stained too. But here's what we got. We got a gray one. We got a yellow one. So now we have to decide what color base do we want on this one. I think I'm gonna go with. Let's go with the gray because with the white fabric, the gray frame is going to show the fabric better. The yellow um, wouldn't show it as well. So I need more gray paint. You guys still with me? Are you still with me? Oh, how nice, Joyce. 
Yeah, someone said gray is a lot better. I agree, the gray turned out way better. It's good to be able to have the comparison, right? And say, hey, we tried it with the white and the yellow. That's kind of, we tried it, didn't work. So we're just gonna redo, quick redo. I'm doing my gray frame. I don't have to paint the whole thing. I just need the edges because that's what's gonna peek through. And then I need the top to be gray. I'm going for scratchy and not all the way painted. I'm not going for full paint coverage here. We want it to look vintage and like scratchied up, if that makes sense. And a little wonky. You know me, I always like the wonky. So you can see it's not a perfect paint job, but it's it looks ugly like that all by itself, but it's not done. So we're gonna take our little lemon farm truck and for the sake of time, you guys, I'm just gonna staple this on like I did the last one because I thought that turned out really cute and it was so easy. Um, so excuse the noise again, here we go. The brads are adorable, they take more time. So just bear with me, I'm going right through my truck tire. Hey, did I run out of staples? I did, <laughs> I was like, uh, hey, that I can't even see that, it's because I ran out. I knew I only had a few left, so I grabbed another set. I'm thinking I might be using this. Going right through the truck tire. Easy breezy. Okay, so this is what we have on this one. Cute, that is so much nicer, right? If I had used this and I stuck with my original, that's what we'd be looking at, and that is just too hard to see. So we got this, now we gotta work the yellow in. So, here's my thought, because here's our little collection. Let's get these laid out. This is what we got, they're all coordinating colors, right? So we have this one here, but I need, I desperately need some yellow on here to get this coordinated. So I'm gonna take this yellow strip of fabric. I'm gonna grab me a strip of this. We'll strip, we'll hang with one strip. I need a longer strip, because I wanna make a little bow, and I need a longer strip than this one. That one's not long enough, but. You know what we could do? We could do one of my little messy bows with this. I could, first of all, I have to see where am I gonna put this little messy bow. I'm gonna put it right here. So if it's sitting right here, it's gonna be tiny, you guys. This is gonna be a tiny little bow, but I'm gonna use all my coordinating fabrics. I'm gonna use the yellow. I have a bit of the white. So I'm gonna use the, the wider part of the white. So it's a little more substantial and we can see it. And um, I need a little chunk of the gray. So where's all my fabric scraps? Um, I could have used the bows that I already have on hand, but I'm trying, oh, that's more white. I need a piece of this. Um, I'm trying to keep everything coordinated. I think it looks really sweet to be able to coordinate all this stuff using the same fabrics. So I could have just taken one of the bows that I already, you know, they're pre-made, but it doesn't match. So we're gonna, we're gonna line up a bunch of these. I'm gonna make one of my tiny little messy bows. Okay, it's gonna be tiny. We got some gray, we got some yellow, we got some, actually the white is the widest. That's a really wide chunk of white, so I'm gonna put that in the back. Um, now I'm confusing myself. I had to turn it upside down so I did it right. Because that was the widest section. And actually I wanna end with, we're putting it on here. This tiny little bow is gonna go on here. So I think that's plenty. I wanted to end with the yellow, so that's what's showing on the top. And I'm gonna use the yellow to tie it all together. I want an even thinner strip if I can get it. So I'm going really thin. This is what's gonna tie it all together. Scrunch it like a bow tie in the middle. Flip it upside down. I'm gonna use this tiny little strip of yellow too. Hold it all together. It's gonna to be the tiniest little bow you've ever seen in your life. Um, I'm a little wonky, so this side is a little shorter than the other one, so all you need to do is pull on that fabric to get it to even out. So see, we have a little fabric bow made up of all the fabrics. It's got the yellow, the gray polka dot, and this white fabric in it, so it's all coordinated. 
all looks like it comes from the same project. Does that make sense to you? Like in your mind's eye, it's like a little family. <laughs> I'm just straightening out my, uh, evening out my bow. And then I'm monkeying with it now because I want that yellow to really show, but I first really do need to get it on my project. So I think I want this to show here. This is the fabric that I used to tie it all together and I'm gonna leave it on there as kind of like a little tail. Okay, and we're going to, I'm gonna turn on my hot glue gun. I'm gonna glue this on right here. Um, but first, let's get our tie. While I'm waiting for my glue gun to um, warm up, let's get our tie. So I'm gonna use the same yellow so that they all three have the same yellow fabric for a tie. Okay, so I need another strip. I don't think this strip is long enough. Oh, maybe it is. Another strip of the yellow. You guys, see how this is coming together? Okay, last week, the project that I made last week, it was really fun. I have not even chosen a winner yet. I will do it today because it has been one full week. Um, I'm looking around to see if I have that here. It was the one that said, um, I think, I think we, it said choose joy, right? Um, I think that's what it said. <laughs> I'm giving it away in my Crafty Chicks Club, which is my free craft community. So I will give away this set of three little tags that we just made. I will give them away in my craft community um, called the Crafty Chicks Club. So just head on over to my page, The Comfy Nest with Grace. Make sure you follow and like, because if you win, I need to be able to tag you so that you know that you won. Um, and I will give this away next week. So be, you know, for next week. Okay, that was kind of fun to be able to do that for you guys. So let's do that again. I'm going to attach this on here like this. We're just going to, I think we're going to put it right here. I'll cut these down because I they are a little long. I'll cut them down. Let's get our glue going though. Yay! I think it said choose joy, you guys. I know the bottom said joy. <laughs> I think the top said choose. And it's in it's in my office waiting to be, waiting for the name to be chosen for who I gave it to. Because I haven't chosen a name yet. But I will. So what I do, still waiting for that glue gun. It takes about two minutes to warm up. So what I do is I will take a picture of these um, for Essential Stencil to help them. Um, they always like a picture of the project when it's done. And then I will post that picture sometime between today and tonight. I will post that picture in the Crafty Chicks Club and it will be pinned to the top of the club in that community and you just have to find the pin and then what I ask you to do is to go in there and I'll ask you to answer a question. So read the post with the picture and then answer the question to be entered to win. And then I will randomly choose somebody from all those comments, um, the people who answered the question, I'll randomly choose one of you to win this, okay? So it's a really fun way for me to share with you guys and um, to help you guys get to know my community, to like welcome you into my craft community. Thank you, you guys. Thank you, Gail. Thank you, Lucinda. You guys are awesome. Thank you for all those birthday greetings. <laughs> Thank you, Ravi and Sandra. Now I'm seeing them all. And Billy and Candy. You guys are awesome. I'm glad you guys think these are so cute. Yeah, these would these would be a really cute little um, gift as a set. Or listen, you could you don't have to gift the whole set. You could split them up and give three different girlfriends a little tag with a little note on the back. Um, let's get this little bow on here because that's going to be super cute right there. And the little tails, I like them, but they're a little long. So let me trim those up a little bit and then we'll see. I may take them off completely. I, I, I don't, I want them to add to, not take away from the project. So let's cut those a little and see if we like them. Yeah, they're really cute because they give just another little pop of yellow. And there's your tiniest little bow you've ever seen in the world your little fabric bow, but it has all of the fabrics that are in all three of these. So these could become a little set to hang. If you have like a little lemon tree, maybe you keep up a tree in your house all year round and in the summer it's gonna be lemony. Um, or you can use them as separate little um, decor that you kind of put around your kitchen or wherever you want to, because they'll stand up on their own, kind of on their sides like that. So I hope you guys like this project. I'm going to lay these out so you guys can see them. Essential Stencil is going to choose winners <coughs> right now for three sets of stencils. And all of you replay watchers 
make sure you say replay because somebody, another person will win um, as a replay watcher. Um, if you guys can do this, we, uh, we, I say thank you from the bottom of our hearts from both Essential Stencil and here. Um, I'm Grace from the Comfy Nest with Grace. I hope you'll come on over and like and follow my page. I really appreciate that support. Hey, listen, it's my birthday. It's my birthday, so you can give that to me as a little birthday gift. Come on over to the Comfy Nest with Grace, follow my page, and then join the Crafty Chicks Club. That's my free crafting community where we just share lots of craft stuff. I'll be giving these away. Just look for the, you're going to look for the post and then comment on it by answering the question that I ask in the group. Um, and then I will randomly choose somebody to win that. I'm so glad you guys love them. Someone said that turned out so fabulous. Let me clean up the table a little bit so you can just see, you can just see my little project. Let's get all this other stuff out of the frame so you can see them. Aren't they sweet as anything? They're so cute, you guys. These are Essential Stencils tags. So go grab a set. I would just grab like me. What I would do, grab five of them. Pay shipping once, grab five of them. You'll have them on hand for whenever you want to make a cute little gift. This is a great basket hanger. You can put this on a <clears throat> gift basket. You can put it on a bottle of wine. You can hang it on someone's door handle as a little um, just pick me up, hang it off their mailbox so that when they come home, they get that little treat on their mailbox. It's just so many fun little ways that tags can be used to share and spread joy. Lisa says, this is a sweet and zesty gift idea. Thank you, Essential Stencil, for producing awesome stencils. No doubt. Go grab this stencil set, you guys. It's called Lemon, Lemon Tags. Lemon Tags. Use my code, the Comfy Nest, please, so that I get a little... Um, income from that and you're getting a 10% discount. So it's a win-win. We both win from that. When you use my code, when you're using a brand ambassador's code, you're giving me a little bit of income. I get a little commission from that. You get a little discount from that. And so it's a win-win situation. And I really appreciate if you guys do that for me. All right, let's see who our winners are. We've got Penny Tanyi, Marie Arena Busi, and Tiona Peterson Hernandez. The three of you just won a set of stencils from Essential Stencil. In the pinned post where they listed your names, you will find the email address that you need to email them um, with your name, mailing address, and email address so they can send you a set. You guys, have a beautiful, blessed day. Thanks for being here. Oh, can I hold up the truck, please? There it is, there's my little truck. Someone say, can you hold up the truck, please? I sure can. Let me just check really quick. Are there any other questions? I see a lot of congrats winners. <laughs> You're welcome, Robbie. Oh, yeah, she says, thank you for spending some of your birthday with us. You're welcome. Thanks for being here. Thanks for those of you who used my code. Thank you for doing that. The Comfy Nest, it's just the Comfy Nest, all is one word. No caps needed. I appreciate it. It gives me a little bit of a little boost to my business, and I really appreciate it. All right, you guys, I'll catch in with you next Thursday. I'm live every Thursday for Essential Stencil, so I'll catch you next Thursday here on the page, or you can find me on my page, The Comfy Nest with Grace. Take care. Bye.